Hey folks, Tim Miller here. And I got to tell you, I, I can't even believe what I'm about to report to you. I cannot believe what's happened in our country in, in a very short period of time. And I, I want to tell you that I, I couldn't, I wouldn't have believed this if I hadn't seen this story come up. And actually, I, even when I read the story, I, I was very shocked. But let's take a look at it together and I'll get your take on it. This was the Fox News report from last week. Now, I want you to look at this carefully. Biden DHS docs suggest Trump supporters, military and religious people are likely violent terror threats. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Let, let me say this again. Biden's DHS documents suggested Trump supporters, military and religious people are likely violent terror threats. Just so there's no question, I know headlines can be a little bit wackadoodle. Let's look at the substance of it. It says a DHS um, advisory board. At, now, now get this, folks. The, these are not a, a group of wackadoodles. These are people that work for the government in an advisory capacity. An advisory board suggested that supporters of former President Donald Trump, as well as those who served in the military or are religious, have a greater possibility of posing domestic terrorism risks. According to, thank God, America First Legal did a FOIA and all this has come out. Now, if you think about it, let's read on a little bit more. The Homeland Intelligence Experts Group, which has now been disbanded, has come up you know, a number of times in general, but I had no idea until I looked at this. They have ex or had expert analysis that included, okay, former CIA director John Brennan that began to make these, I would call them crazy statements that, again, think, think of the group. You're including the military. I'm a form, I'm a retired U.S. Marine Corps Reserve Lieutenant Colonel. I served 27 years in the Marine Corps, serving our country, risking my life for the country. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, if you're anything other than a Democrat, so you're a Trump supporter, then that means you fall into the danger zone. And then, oh, religious people. I got to tell you, folks, when I saw this story, it absolutely blew me away. Why? I don't know if you noticed the shirt. I was a charter member of the Department of Homeland Security uh, when it was formed following the attacks of 9-11. I worked every day like everybody else, 24-7 trying to make sure our citizens were protected. No more towers fell. We had close connectivity with the FBI, worked at the FBI for a season. We connected every day with the 56, at that point, 56 Joint Terrorism Task Forces nationwide. There are many more now. But here's the thing that just infuriates me. Do you mean to tell me that some wackadoodle group, and I'm calling them a wackadoodle, because uh, let, let me just say this. When I showed up at the Department of Homeland Security, there were incredible, incredible leaders in place, including Secretary Tom Ridge, General Frank Labuti, I mean, uh, it, it, General Matt Broderick, both former Marine officer or generals. Um, you had Colonel Bill Parrish. You had all these guys 
that had spent their life risking their life for our country. And now they were passionate. They were working 24 seven. We were all trying to figure out when is the next attack stop, uh, you know, going to occur? How, how can we protect the American people? Folks, this article shows you that we've identified the enemy. Oh, but it's us. I want you to think about that. I want you to pause and think about that. Your tax dollars were going to support an organization within the Department of Homeland Security that is putting out information, processing information, that suggests that if you are conservative, religious, and a member of the U.S. military, you are a possible domestic violent extremist. Folks, I don't know about you, but if, if that this doesn't cause the hair on the back of your neck to stand up, then you're not thinking really through this, especially if you're any of those above. If you're conservative, if you're religious, or you're a member of the military, and I would throw one more group now that they didn't then, but they probably would now. If you're a member of law enforcement, then you're now the enemy according to these people. Think about that. Think about how backwards this whole thing has become. That now, right's wrong, wrong's right. The government is here to control and dominate you, no longer to support and defend you. Courts have gone crazy. Law enforcement has gone crazy. It's really unbelievable. Now, you may say, oh, that's Fox News reporting. Okay, well, there are four of you documents out there. And here's what I encourage you to do. Freedom of Information Act documents can't be really tampered with because they're government documents that somebody has had the foresight to say, I want to see those documents for myself. I want to make my own opinion or my own opinion. I don't want Fox or MSNBC or anybody else making my own opinion or forming my own opinions. I want to do it myself. I, I, I'm going to tell you, folks, if you don't look at this, through the lens that we are slowly but deliberately slipping into the abyss, then you're missing the whole thing here. You're missing the whole point. The whole point is this. When evil begins to march, it can only be stopped by good. Now, I know there are many out here that go, oh, well, our country is doing this or doing that. Hey, let me just say this up front. I love my country. I fought for my country. But it's a different country today than it was even 20 years ago. The things we're standing for now, which we used to consider evil, but now it's all good. That's scary to me, folks. That's horrifying to me that we're at a point in our country where good's evil and evil's good. And, and let me just be really clear. I'm going to try not to get emotional. If you're calling my brothers and sisters in the U.S. military, those that are willing to go lay down their life to def defend all these politicians and all these sick people making comments like this, if you're de if you're defaming them, if you if you're saying, oh, they're 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 violent extremists because they believe in the Constitution, because they believe that that we as Americans should have certain intrinsic values that we believe in, we're willing to fight for and defend that freedom matters, that righteousness matters. If you're gonna call them domestic violent extremists then you're a sick person and let me let me just say this i know that some of my audience is older i hope and pray that younger people listen to this message you are being sold a bill of lies you're not being taught history you're being told that evil is good you're hearing it from professors at universities 
let me get it clear, that hate our country. They hate our country. Let me say it a different way. They hate our country. And this is intentional. They'll tell you socialism's good. They'll tell you that communism is good. They'll tell you that everybody should share everything and that work values don't matter. They'll tell you that you should be able to live your life however you want without restrictions and certainly without laws. The only question I'm going to ask you, if you're a young person, how's it working in San Francisco for that? How do you feel about those precious broken people walking around like zombies with open sores? defecating on sidewalks. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about businesses fleeing in record numbers because of the tyranny of state government? How do you feel about that? How do you feel about being told exactly what you will think? How do you feel about that? How do you feel about having politicians call one half of the country evil while the other half is good according to their definition of good do you want i I mean young person do you want that kind of life for yourself oh by the way for your kids i'm just going to tell you a quick story and then i'm going to shut up because i'm very passionate about this my dad was a world war ii veteran and he experienced first hand what it meant to go overseas and to face pure pit of hell evil face on. The Japanese Empire, they didn't care about anything but loyalty to the emperor at all cost, regardless of morality, regardless of right, regardless of wrong. They didn't believe in freedom for the people. They didn't, on and on. Then we look at Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler put brown shirts in place, meaning, They forcefully told you what you could think. They forcefully told you who you should hate. Oh, by the way, that happens to be Jews. Oh, by the way, who now is advocating for the death of Jews? Hey, folks, you're going to have to put a jersey on and get on the field. You got to pick one. No more of this. Oh, this is politics. No, it's not. It's good and evil. Simple good and evil. Now, we all don't live forever, and this life matters. What you do with this life, you will be remembered for. I I will tell you this, I will in no way, which you've noticed my podcasts have gotten stronger, I will in no way shy away from calling evil, evil, and good, good. And let me just be clear in case you're wondering, good is when you stand for the things that are good as defined by the creator. That's what's good. Evil is when you stand for the things of evil that are defined by Satan or the devil himself. Now, some of you are going to go, oh, I don't believe in any of that religious stuff. That's fine. Let, let me just tell you this. Guys like me and gals like me, we fought to make sure you could choose that. You understand that? The reason you can say, I don't believe it, I have it. The reason you can say whatever you want is because people believed in your freedom so much that they were willing to lay down their life for it. Now, you may not appreciate it, and you may buy the bill of goods that say all cops are bad and military people are conservative and all that kind of garbage. You can, you can believe that. But I'll tell you something. One day you're going to wake up. And the light's going to go on, and I hope it's soon. For you young people, I hope it's soon. I listen to the debates on college campuses, and I just can't believe it. You know what? We have an entire generation of young people who have no respect for anything. And because of that, because of that lack of respect, because of that lack of human decency and and values of others, we're going to... That's going to come all the way back around and things are going to get more violent and more evil. Now, I realize this is a, this is a harsh statement to make, um, but I, I really feel like after this whole thing, realizing, wait a minute. 
our government formed a committee that came out with a finding that the enemies of the U.S. government, our way of life, our freedom, are those very people who sacrificed and died to protect our freedom. Young people, if, if you don't get that, how crazy that is, how amazingly, amazingly deceptive that is, then it may be too late. So let me just encourage you, check it out for yourself. Don't believe the Democrats. Don't believe the Republicans. You know, I always say, um, I'm, I'm going to vote for what is right and good and for what I know will benefit our country. I, I, I'm so done with the political back and forth. And, and I'm going to say it. It's on both sides. Don't come on. Give me a break. I see congressmen and congresswomen that are elected to do certain. Th oh, yeah, you're going to. And then all of a sudden, boom, look at what's happening with the borders. You know, I mean, if you think about it, we're pending a significant attack because the borders are wide open. Imagine leaving your front door open, knowing that you live in a very violent home invasion neighborhood. And that's what we've done. And so the home invasions are coming. The people that have entered our country that absolutely hate us, want to destroy our way of life, they're here. And they're free to do what they want to do. So let's hope and pray that there are enough good people that look at stuff like this. And, you know, you've heard it before. I'm not a political activist. I, I, I just want people to be safe. But here's what I know. I've been in those countries where some of this garbage that's being espoused. I've been in Cuba. I've been in Cuba and seen what all this grand, glorious socialists garbage looks like and it looks like the worst possible life you can have and i know there'll be others everybody argues oh there are other country well whatever here's what i know there's a reason the united states is still the most desirable place on the planet for people to come and live the primary reason is because we have freedom freedom of speech freedom of religion freedom to bear arms freedom not to incriminate ourselves in courts of law. And let me just say this again to the young people. If you've never studied the U.S. Constitution, that should be your number one goal, because those have been the guiding principles in our country right up until now. I don't know how much longer they're going to survive because of activist judges. But let me say this. I've never seen those anywhere else. I've never seen the principles that the founders put into those documents, practiced anywhere else. And so looks like we have a pretty good country because they've been practiced. So I want to share that with you. I realize it's not the, uh, it seems like a lot of what I've talked about of late has not been the happiest, gladdest thing in the world, especially when you look at the corresponding violence and you, you look at what's happening across our country. We look, I'm going to do another um, video on the migrant violence. I mean, it, it really is astounding, astounding that between the fentanyl murder spree that is a result of open borders and now the criminal murder spree that's the result of open borders and soon the terrorist murder spree that's a result of open borders. I'm just shocked that whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, this should absolutely infuriate you as an American. So I hope you do well out there. I hope you stay safe. I hope this has been at least a thought provoking document and, um, Love your comments. I really do appreciate. By the way, thank you. So many of you have been commenting and, you know, that you don't have to agree 100% with me. I'd love to hear other thoughts. And uh, But here's what I know. We're in this together. And if we don't fight it together, there's no chance. Folks, it, it, it's the most serious time for the United States, I believe, in the history of the country. And we're going into a summer that is going to be, mark my words, 
very problematic. But I want you to know, I am for you. As a member of law enforcement retired, as a military member retired, and as somebody who has faith, I am all for our country and all for protecting you. I'm just really amazed that a government organization would say, we found the enemy and it's me. God bless you. Stay safe.